OK, so we've seen how we can apply LUTs in Premiere and Avid. Now I'm going to come to one of my favorite editing programs, which is Grass Valley Edius. Edius currently doesn't do LUTs. I'm using Edius 8 because I'm filming this at the end of September in 2015. And at this time, you can't load LUTs into Edius. So effectively, I've got to take this vlog look clip and make it into something usable using the filters that are available in Edius. So I'm going to go through that now with you. It's fairly obvious. It's the same way you would do color grading and so on in Edius anyway. But I'm going to specifically go through it using this clip and a couple of filters for how I would do it. There will be updates coming out for Edius 8. And one of the ones promised is the ability to use LUTs. Now we don't know when it's coming. There is an update due at the end of October in 2015 and I'm pretty sure that LUTs will not be in that one. So we don't know when that will actually be added to Edius. They just said sometime over the life of Edius 8, which is gonna be a couple of years up until 2017, they will be adding in LUTs. So sooner or later you'll be able to add a LUT just like you can inside of Premiere and Avid, but you can't right now. So what do you do with it? Well, you have two options. One is to take it into another program and apply the LUT and then export some files which you then edit in Edius. If I was going to do that, I'd use DaVinci Resolve and my next chapter covers exactly how I would do that. But I'm not gonna do that here. I'm just gonna take this and make it a usable clip using the stuff that Edius currently has, which is Edius's standard color correction filter. So looking at my list of effects here, I've got various color correction effects. I tend to use the three-way color corrector and the YUV curve for most things. The YUV curve is a great filter for adjusting the brightness of a clip. And of course, this is a bit flat, so that's what I need to do. I need to put a bit more contrast in there, make the blacks blacker and the whites whiter. So I'm gonna use the YUV curve and I'm just gonna drag it and drop it onto the clip. Then you open it up and you're presented with the regular interface, which shows you three graphs. This one here deals with the brightness levels. These two deal with color, and I tend to do the color using this three-way color corrector effect. So I'm gonna ignore these two and just concentrate on this one. And this thing here shows you a graph going from the dark parts of the image down the bottom to the bright parts at the top. And if I drag this little dot at the top and drag it to the left, you can see the image gets brighter, drag it downwards, it gets darker. Same with the one at the bottom. If you drag that one way, the image gets darker. If you drag it upwards, the blacks will get lighter. And what I want to do is I just want to drag these two dots so that the black bits are as black as they can be and the white bits are as white as they can be without killing the image. And that'll add a bit more contrast into the image and make it look like a proper image. You see, do it too much, I've obviously killed it. Get it right and I'll have a nice looking shot at the end of it. Adjusting this graph here doesn't adjust the saturation, so you can see it's getting a bit wishy-washy in terms of color, but I can sort that out using the three-way color correction filter. And then I'll get it into a usable state. And it's like doing a LUT. A LUT is basically something where somebody has created some settings of brightness and color and so on, and then just throws it on there and makes it usable. Here, I'm just doing it from scratch. And I could do this in any of the programs. I can do it in Avid, I can do it in Premiere and so on, but I have the advantage in the other programs that I can just use the LUT and then fiddle with it from there. Anyway, when I'm fiddling with the brightness like this, obviously I'm looking at it on the screen here. The screen here is not the best place to look at the video. This is a computer screen. Computer screens do not work in the right color space for video. It'll look different on a proper TV or monitor. So I will want to be popping this out onto a proper screen, ideally a proper grading screen, but they can be quite expensive, especially for 4K. So I'm popping this out onto an LC TV, which I fiddled with the settings so it's fairly well set up. And I'm judging it on there. I'm not judging it here. Obviously you can't see that, so you'll just have to believe me that that's what I'm doing. Even then, when I'm looking at the screen, all sorts of things can affect the way things look. It's really nice to actually be able to analyze the image, not just based on what you can see, but in some other way. And for that, I use these things. I'm just gonna click on this little button down here, and it'll turn on the Edius vector scope and waveform. The vector scope here deals with color, the waveform deals with brightness. Now I'm not gonna deal with the color right now, so I'm just gonna turn the vector scope off by clicking this little button and just leave the waveform. The waveform here shows me the brightness levels of the image. So if you look at the image here, this part of the waveform on the far left is the far left of the image. The part over here on the far right is the far right of the image. This part here is this kind of dark tree in the middle. 
And you see what this is showing you is the bright bits at the top, the dark bits at the bottom, and all the levels in between. And a well set up image has the bright bits up here around about this line and the dark bits down here around about the north line. And that's a pretty well set up image, which, you know, I just fiddled with this and changed it and it looks like I've got it fairly good. If I just set that back to how it started by pressing the default button, you can see now how the waveform looks. It's all sort of squashed in the middle. There's nothing down by the zero here and there's nothing up by this plus 100 line here which makes it look very, very flat. Now, obviously, I can tell it's flat by looking at it. This just gives me another way of analyzing it. And if I take the little dot at the bottom of the YEV curve and drag it, you notice all the dark bits gets darker, and I can keep dragging it down till it gets closer and closer to that naught line. And eventually, I drag it and drag it and drag it, and then the whole thing starts flattening out, and lots of the image starts just disappearing into a big blob down here. And you notice, yeah, it's got very, very dark. On the other end, I can drag it up and make it brighter, and that'll make the bright parts brighter. And again, if I drag that far enough, you notice that all flattens out, and I get really blown out highlights. So what you want to aim for with this is you want to aim for the dark bits to be around about zero, and the light bits to be around about 100. And you'll end up with an image which is pretty good. It's fairly well spread out. And so I use this a lot when I'm adjusting brightness. I don't just rely on the waveform, I do look at it. Because all images are different. You do have to look at it and form a judgement. But I like this because it does helps me, it just gives me a different way of looking at the image. So if I fiddled with these sliders looking at the image and thinking, oh that looks about right, I can then look at the waveform and say, oh yeah that's not bad, that's around the naught, that's around the hundreds, I've probably got it just about right. There's another little button you can tick down here called Safe Colour. We've had to deal with safe colours on video images for ages. In the old days of CRT TVs, if your image was a bit too bright or a bit too dark, so in other words it was out of the safe colour range, it could actually make some CRT tube TVs buzz. Now these days, when you've got LCD screens, you'd expect it to be a lot better and they'd be a lot more tolerant, but we have been told by broadcasting people that we know that if you do things that are outside of the safe colour ranges, it still causes them problems. So ideally you want to keep inside the safe colour ranges. If I tick that, it makes sure that no dark areas go below the zero and no bright areas go well above the hundred. So if I try to make this darker and darker, you'll notice it's immediately flattening it off at the zero. Whereas if I untick it, it goes a little bit further. So again, when I'm fiddling this, I like to tick the safe colour box and then fiddle with this and check out the waveform and check out the picture until I'm 100% happy with the general look. That's how I would use a waveform here to help me get the brightness levels correct. Now having done the brightness levels, I want to do the colour. And to do that, I'm going to use the three-way colour corrector. Again, drop it on the clip, open it up. Now here I could change the colour balance, you know, if it was too blue or too yellow or whatever. Mainly what I'm going to do is adjust the saturation, because like I said, the whole thing it's got a bit washed out as I change the brightness. The, there's not enough colour in the grass and so on. And what I like to do is I like to add more saturation here into the mid-tones. So you've got the dark areas or the shadows, you've got the mid-tones and you've got the highlights. If I take the mid-tones and just up the saturation a bit, you notice I'm now getting more colour in the grass. That's not bad at all. It's now come out to a decent colour. I could put more colour in the shadows if I want to. I tend to like to have quite sort of black or not colourful shadows and I could change the colour in the highlights. So, you know, I'm changing the colour in all the bright areas around here. If I've got the contrast slider down here, I can also change the darks so and make the blacks a bit blacker, make the mid-tones either a bit whiter or a bit darker. But I don't have the control here that I do in the YUV curve. If I just try to use this thing on its own, it wouldn't actually have brightened up the image enough. But I can use it to tweak it, so I can just put a bit more darkness in the shadows and have a little bit darker shadows whilst actually upping the saturation. So I like to do that. I like to use the two of those. I use these for basically all of my colour correction or grading inside of EDIUS. I very rarely use any of the other filters because I can find I can do most things I like with those. But anyway, I've now got something which I think looks pretty good. If I select them in the information bin, and turn them off, then turn them on, you can see what the difference is like. Quite like that, that's a nice look. I might want to go further, 
so having got a look I might then shove another three-way color corrector on there and maybe I've decided okay I want to have you know the mid-tones a bit yellow or a bit blue or whatever I can throw on more filters and do more stuff with it but what I'm trying to do is to get it so far so I get it to a reasonable looking shot and I've now got basically the equivalent of a lot so if I go to another clip such as this one I can select these two effects as my actual selected clip here is still the one I did the effect on I just select them in the information window drag them and drop them on another clip and it puts those same effects on that clip and again it's like putting a LUT on there, it's now made it a usable shot I might want to tweak it, I can still open these up and change it and whatever but basically it's got a bunch of settings I can just throw on every clip to try and make it look good so I could just select all of them and drop them on there like that but given that I've just spent a bit of effort getting those in there and given that all the vlog shots should be roughly the same I'm going to save that as a preset and then that preset will be there forevermore I can use it in EDIUS every time I use vlog footage so I'm going to select both of them right click and say save as current user preset I'm going to call it uh, GH4 LUT it isn't an actual LUT but it's my EDIUS equivalent and now I can come to any other clip and just drag that on there and it automatically gives it that same look. Now here you can see I've got all these same shots and what I've done here is I've got the shots which are done with a couple of EDIUS effects, the three-way color corrector and the YUV curve, and a shot here where I use that GH4 LUT in DaVinci Resolve, like I said you can go into Resolve, put the LUT on, save out something which you can use in EDIUS and I've actually used that LUT and exported some files and brought those in and you can see me here comparing what EDIUS has done to what the LUT's like and you can see they're pretty similar they're never going to be exactly the same and I have had some shots where the, the LUT sometimes does some things a little bit better with the skin tones than I've actually managed with EDIUS on its own like I said the nice thing about a LUT is somebody very clever has made it up so they've said this is a very good way of getting good stuff out of it so it is a nice thing to use and it'll be really nice when EDIUS can use them as it can't this is how I'm getting around it using the EDIUS effects which gets fairly fairly close so just looking through all these shots as you can see the look done in EDIUS is fairly similar to the look done in the LUT I actually prefer the slightly yellower look that I did in EDIUS I could have made it a bit bluer which is what the LUT looks like but it's pretty close and that's how I deal with the footage in EDIUS